when you are working clinically, what what are some of the most, I guess not basic, but like foundational things you always like to work with when working with people and their pets or their animals? What's um what's some things you're always, I guess, looking at in terms of health, wellness, and maybe it is like a more clinical scenario where there is like more of a pathology. My practice now is pretty pretty unique in that we deal with um, a lot of senior pets and so that group of, of patients, they, had, they share a lot of problems with chronic organ disease and arthritis and neurologic problems. So it's, it's really important for us to be really cognizant of that human-animal bond because, uh, you know, those pets have lived with their owners for years and years and years. And so we, we need to make sure that their quality of life is good and that uh, we've got a clear understanding with the owners on what they're expecting us to do, you know, uh, cure isn't usually possible for those patients, but we can make them as comfortable as we can and support them as much as we can in their final years. Yeah. So really fostering sort of that uh, attunement day eh, with the animals and the relationship with the owners. It sounds like that's a pretty big foundation to that end of life or not end of life, but yeah, that more chronic transitioning phase for some of these pets and owners. Yeah. Yeah. We do see some younger patients, but but the bulk of our patients are older and and just, yeah, coming to that understanding of what the family wants. And sometimes there's, you know, I have to suss that out. And the, what's, have they come to some agreement between the husband and wife and the kids? And you know, what's acceptable and what's not as far as things that can happen at home? But for sure, it's, you know, main, definitely maintaining a quality of life. And that's something we discuss a lot, you know, what they're seeing at home and what I'm seeing in the clinic with the pet. So with some of these um, more chronic pictures with some of the, the pets and animals, looking at, I guess, some of like the basic organ function. And how do you assess, like, from my perspective, I'm in natural health care. So, you know, sometimes we use labs, sometimes signs and symptoms. I'm sure it's a combo with you. But what are your assessment techniques when you're in that kind of phase? Again, our practice is a little different in that we don't do any of that lab work. But a lot of our patients will come bearing that lab work, which is really nice. I mean, the more information, the better. A lot of times for us, the, um, you know, the, the thing that the uh, factor in our world is that insurance doesn't cover that stuff. Well, most people in the U.S. don't carry pet insurance, and so that's an out-of-pocket expense. And so uh, a lot of times, certainly the routine blood work and, and some of those basic labs are are affordable to most people. But when we start looking at some of the more advanced diagnostics like uh, CAT scans or MRI, a lot of our clients may show up without those. So if we feel like um, they need those, we may ask them to go back to their primary care veterinarian and get some of that stuff. But certainly for me, the biggest thing is that meeting with the pet in the room and doing that hands-on and getting a sense of of how they're doing through the physical exam and, and through getting a really good history from the owner. Yeah, that sounds like a real, a real important factor to yeah doing your job and continuing the care. So I know that in the integrative vet world, there are varying techniques. And I know that you have extra training in chiropractics, herbal medicine, and acupuncture. Do you want to go through a couple of those different um, modalities that you may sometimes use with your animals and your care? Sure. I use pretty much all three of those with pretty much every patient. But just a little background. None of those things are really taught in veterinary school. They certainly weren't when I was a student. We never got any exposure to any of that. A lot of the students now, and depending on the school, it still hasn't penetrated enough for anybody's liking, or at least in our part of the business. But students may get exposed through an elective, which is at least helpful. Um, but all of these, all of this training is postgraduate for us, and those are centered around courses that may run in the 180 to 250 hour for a starter. So, you know, you're out practicing, you've got to take that time off from work and, and go and maybe be at a, a training center from a Wednesday through a Sunday uh, or a Thursday through Sunday. A lot of it now, even pre-COVID was, they were starting to evolve where some of that could be done online, which is nice. Certainly nice from a travel standpoint or maybe a time away from work standpoint, but uh, you know, there's a certain camaraderie you get being around practitioners that are studying the same thing and entering that kind of phase of practice as you are. And I say that because as a pretty um, interested but, but allopathic veterinarian, 
my first really my first training was in chiropractic and in this country we train doctors in animal chiropractic uh, we train both veterinarians and chiropractors, and depending on the state, chiropractors or doctors of chiropractic can work legally on animals. And so getting in, in that room and sitting next to chiropractors for a lot of docs, a lot of veterinarians maybe have never been to a chiropractor themselves or had an acupuncture treatment uh, prior to, to enrolling in the course. So it's really just a big mind shift, I think, especially with chiropractic, you know, getting amongst professionals in another field and sitting next to them and, and chatting and really getting a good exposure. It's just, it was mind blowing really. Yeah. It's great to have that synergy between the, the varying fields and yeah, I guess the varying level of experiences too with the vet. Yeah. Just the exposure, I guess, that you're used to. What's acupuncture like with animals? Take me through that. It, it actually works a lot better than what most people think. With our clients, most, I would say probably less than 10% have had an experience themselves with acupuncture, so they have no preconceived notion going in. So I've got a pretty good um, quick explanation for them. People know that they want, they, they think they want that for their pet because they've heard about the benefits, but they don't have any sense of what it's going to be like. And, and depending on the style of practice, the style of acupuncture that a doc might use, you know, can vary from a couple of needles to as many as 20. 20 or more, we use pretty small needles. And I actually uh, use a laser quite a bit in my practice for acupuncture. So it's completely painless for my patients. I really, a big thing with our practice, because we're only doing um, holistic care, so to speak, we're not doing routine vaccinations or even like we talked about, even the lab work. I want the pets to be, to know when they come in that they're not going to experience any discomfort. And it's really uh, worked well for us. You know, we don't use exam tables. I'm on the floor to work with them. We've got cushy dog beds. They don't come in with an expectation that there's going to be any discomfort. And even with the chiropractic, which never the technique I use is pretty soft. And so they're not experiencing any, any real discomfort from that. Once we get over the initial introduction session, you know, they, they come in hopefully knowing to expect that it's going to be, it's going to feel good. And so the acupuncture actually, whether I'm using needles or not, usually goes pretty well. Cats, cats can be a bit difficult sometimes, of course, because they can be difficult about everything. We just work with them and we work with the dogs too and, and just come to some understanding and try to get done what we can get done. Fascinating. Yeah, that's, that's really, really great. I think, yeah, because I think as humans, I don't know if you agree, but you know, we're all condition to some some degree so going to a practitioner ourself whatever you know it's got to be enjoyable so i yeah i guess um i don't mean to i don't want to say animals are more conditioned but yeah i guess they are really in tune with their environment and yeah they don't want to come back to something that was painful so that makes a lot of sense the laser sounds interesting so yeah you just put laser on the specific acupuncture points and it um you just stimulate them that's correct yeah. And just to, to build on that a little bit, uh, yeah, you know, the pet's got a sense of the best thing that an owner can tell us is, you know, hey, when they realize we're coming here, they get really excited. But, you know, and then the owners too, they're, the pets are picking up on how the owners are feeling. And so, you know, the owners know that it's not going to be a stressful uh, situation for the pet either. And so that works in our favor too, that, you know, we try to keep everybody relaxed and comfortable. 